Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Working Class Fishing Podcast, a place for all anglers, amateur or expert, to share their stories and learn about fishing. Join your hosts, John and Brian, each episode as they debunk the perceived inaccessibility to fishing, break down the barriers of any and all angling methods, and hear stories from other anglers and their own journeys with fishing. Now, let's get this show started. Here we go. Welcome back to another episode of Working Class Fishing. I am your host tonight, John. Brian is out with his family, as usual. It's the weekend. We don't usually schedule episodes on the weekend, but I've got a good friend here with me. Uh, distinct pleasure, as Brian would say, of talking to Mr. Adam Hortonberry. And uh, this episode is brought to you by CD Fishing USA, Angry Rooster Fly Company, 317 flies, lid rig, sheer cure, and naughty tackle. But Adam, dude, thanks so much for coming on tonight. <laughs> dude, thanks for having me, man. I, uh, I've been excited to do it. We've been talking about it for a little bit. And I'm excited we got to uh, schedule it. Dude, absolutely. I'm just, I'm just excited I get to sit down and talk with one of my friends and be kind of nerdy about, about fly stuff. <laughs> It's, it's the best thing ever. When I, um, when I started doing the shows, that's kind of what it was. It was just like guys and gals of all ages just getting together and essentially nerding out about arts and crafts for adults is really what it was. <laughs> At expensive. the end of the day, that's expensive. what it is. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, dude. You're good. Yeah, I was just saying expensive ass arts and crafts. <laughs> It's pretty much what it is, yeah. Like, especially going down like the game changer route, the Blaine route, and all that stuff. I'm just like, oh my god, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> so you're tying at the uh, God. What is that show? What is that show that's coming up? Uh, uh, the Fly Fishing Marlboro, Marlboro, the Mass yeah, Show. Bro. Yep, dude, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm pretty excited that uh, they moved it out last year to COVID and it kind of affected the attendance just a tiny bit. But um, the promoter, Ben, and his dad, who's been running the shows forever, they're, they're always awesome to the tires and the vendors and they, they take good care of you. So no complaints, even with like, you know, a couple of lows in the attendance. It was so amazing just to be able to do it. Um, there are guys like, you know, um, Phil Rowley and Landon Mayer there and yeah, man, it was pretty cool. Dude, Rowley ties some amazing. I mean, all those dudes there tie fucking. See, I, yep, I, I let there it is. There's the first cuss word. All, <laughs> all, all those dudes are so talented and, and, and gals. They're, we've got some excellent women uh, in the tying community. Yeah. But Adam, uh, as I guess people now know that you tie flies, but um, do you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like where are you from and uh, how'd you get into fishing, dude? Uh, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I got into fishing for my grandpa. He was like a huge, like uh, he's just a huge outdoorsman. And he was, you know, he started me out like everybody else, you know, bobber and the bluegill. And that's pretty much where it came from. And ironically, with fly fishing in general, too, it's it's still enjoyable. Just a just a bluegill pond, man. You know how it is with a little popper yeah. and crazy. It is it's just bluegill are so much fun. <laughs> yeah, there's this um, um, the, not the sidebar, but there's this lady I follow. You might follow her, too. Her name's Sarah. She does those like monster bluegills down in alabama oh sarah parvin yeah yeah the the slab lab <laughs> yeah those things are like frankensteins but no disrespect to her but those things are insane i would love to get them on the fly rod that that would i mean that would be instantly would be a on the fly record for the state yeah she uh she said she's gonna let uh start letting people come down so 
I was like, dude, you got to let me down there one just once, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, been fishing since I was like six. Fly fly fishing didn't pick up till like 2019, and fly tying I just started during COVID. Okay. So that's what jump started it. Um, the guest you had on a couple of weeks ago is pretty much my main inspiration for it. Oh, uh, Kelly. Uh, Kelly, yeah. So I mean, Kelly's. I, I love Blaine stuff, but Kelly's kind of my streamer messiah, as you would say. <laughs> He's just <laughs> like his his way of materials, his videos. Like I think, I think he's the best instructor to listen to when it comes to tying right now for guys that like guys our age because he talks like how we want to hear it. He's just straight up like this is how you do it. Do it. There's there's a lot of really good video. I'm I'm not discrediting kelly at all i think kelly is the fucking man yeah like he's i mean it's the same way for me dude like kelly was a lot of my inspiration bramer was a ton of i took a ton of inspiration from bramer and then um recently dude uh paul monaghan like i've been oh, looking at he's he's so good dude yeah yeah he's he's really really good that's the guy from europe right yeah 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 he's really good um yeah, I mean, and then I really started nerding out because I, I'm listening to Kelly and he starts talking about Andreas Anderson. If you, you know who that is, yeah, dude, the he, the Sids and the Unholy Divers and yeah, man, he. And then I got into his like, and then really nerding out Tommy Lynch. Then you get into the whole Michigan game in general with like your Mike Schmitz and your Russ Maddens and your you know these guys from Michigan, man. I think they're they're quite the pioneer. The, uh, they are, dude, and I think, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but I think it's because, you know, Kelly was talking about the, when they started bringing salmon back and the steelhead and how it was like uh, the largest economical boom there. It was like the first billion dollar industry in a year. Yeah. You know, like fishing and, you know, he was, he was in uh, Traverse, uh, Traverse City. And I was talking to Tommy Lynch today and something I didn't know is that Tommy used to work for Kelly. Oh yeah. I don't yeah, doubt that. Yeah. It, I mean, like you're saying, dude, it's just, it was like this epicenter of, uh, the streamer dudes, like even Lafkus. Uh, yeah. He's dude, I, like all those dudes, man. Those guys are insane. Dude. Uh, you going to streamer love fest this year? <laughs> um, I wish I, uh, I was going to like convince Rebecca to like, let me like bum out down there you know, yeah. but the whatnot, it's just, it's so far. It's, it's going to be like, I, I think you're going right. Yeah, I'm going. I like, if you're in that area and you don't go to streamer love fest, like, and you're a streamer guy, <laughs> just hang it up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I understand it's like a lot to get to, but I don't even think it's, it's not expensive to go. You got who you got, Andreas, you got Russ, you got Kelly, you got um, Lapkus. Matt, what's his name? Um, uh, God, I, I don't remember. You've got a but you've got a ton of really amazing streamer dudes. Like, yeah, you, you're gonna have like two centuries worth of meat mastery uh that's gonna be there and it's at dowie i mean dowie's it's a it's a fucking dowie shop like the white river people throw big streamers on the white river because of alex lafkus and his two dudes and dowie yeah yeah i met dowie last year at salbug he was he was really like i didn't i people might make fun of me but i didn't know who he was honestly i was like is this like Australian dude was like this cool flow and cowboy boots. I'm like, this guy's cool as shit. And he's like, he made fun of my haircut. And I was like, I like this guy. Who is this <laughs> guy? And Rebecca's like, oh, because we went to a shop after the show. Cause I yes. stayed up with my buddy and her, and her husband, Josh. And um, we're heading back and he's like, Hey, you know, um, we're in the shop and they're doing their thing. And I'm picking up materials. Cause I like supporting local fly shops when I can, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like kind of reloading on some stuff and just making conversation with the guys in the shop and talking with Steve a little bit, I guess. And uh, he just had me rolling, dude. He's 
<laughs> like we were talking about patterns and like we started nerding out a little bit he, he was like you're not as goofy as you look are you bud and i just started dying i'm like this guy is <laughs> roasting me but i love every second of it because he's just such a good dude like with a dry humor i loved it man he was he was cool that's awesome dude yeah i'm, I'm really looking forward to getting down there um after this let's if, if there's anything you want i'll when i get down there i'll let you know if there's like any special shit down there and i'll i'll pick something up for you if you want it so yeah yeah i mean i would definitely like if you can uh <laughs> try to get a bug off andreas get one for yourself man i got some flies from him a, a year ago or so and he uh that guy like just to look at it he's like <sighs> he's insane dude Dude, but his, I think that dude's, you know, I, I guess this is a popular phrase, but that dude's fucking built different. Like, yeah, he his, is. Built different. His fucking prep for his stuff is unreal. Yeah. And it's like, it, it brings me back to like playing music. Like, Euro dudes are always a little fancier. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I think they, they, are like so about the detail and I like that. And I kind of transform that into my tying now. Um, I think that they tie so clean that it's like, it doesn't matter to the fish, obviously we all know that, but like they tie so clean and consistent. Like I'll send you pictures of his flies after this and they're so consistent. It's, it looks like it was done on a, like a 3d printer. Yeah. I mean, that's, Oh, dude, that's like the, that's where I want to be, man. Like, I mean, your, your flies are getting really consistent, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds corny and I don't mean to kiss his ass, but I think Kelly's a, a big component to that. And I haven't even met the dude in person or talked to him once. You know what I mean? Oh, dude. I don't, I mean, you don't, you don't have to, to be inspired by someone. True. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and I, it is like, um, I forget who it was. It's Kelly and like Russ and stuff, guys like that. They, well, Russ doesn't really care as much. You, you'll see that if you ever watch his live feeds or whatever, he, he does what he does and he ties his ass off, man. Like he's, I'm telling you, man, I don't mean to kiss their asses, but those Michigan guys know how to fish and that's they, it. I mean, they, they really fucking do, man. Like it's, it's, it's unreal. Yeah. I mean, Russ, Russ is going to be on here um in the spring russ is coming on uh russ is just so awesome like russ is awesome to talk to and he'll answer your questions like there's there's like no no secrets like th these old dudes and i don't mean like age-wise i mean like older dudes that like pioneered us right yeah yeah um they understand that you're not the king forever no, yeah, yeah. And also, they, 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 um, one thing I noticed, especially, like, going to the Sal Bug and, like, um, meeting these guys and these, old, like, you know, guys that have been doing it longer than us, we'll say. Yeah. Even Blaine, like, I thought he'd be pissed that I sell his patterns. I'd be straight up and say it on the internet. Like, I thought he would be like, dude, you're selling my stuff. Like, screw. But yeah. any question I've ever had about a shank or a, a hey, man, does this look – like what do you like he's just like he's a little straightforward which i respect because he's a busy dude but yeah he's like hey man 10 15 20 hook blah 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 like super cool and he knows what i'm doing with him he knows i sell him right like yes yeah. but he like those you're right those older guys they they want us to care so that it continues on and blah 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 but i think it's yeah So you're from Ohio originally. How the fuck did you end up in Rhode Island? So, okay, yeah, bring that back. I, um, I met my wife in Cincinnati while she was in college, and I was just playing music and punk bands and stuff, not really amounting to much. And uh, she's like, hey, you want to be there with me? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. And then she's like, well, you know, and obviously you know, that, that could be the end of the relationship. And I was just like, you know what? Why, why don't we just go for it? And like we, uh, I came out here and then we moved to New York for a little bit and then came back New York city. And I hated New York city so bad. <laughs> I just couldn't stand it. But then, um, 
ironically enough, even though I'm here and like, I get made fun of all the time when I go to shows or what have you. Um, I just, maybe it's cause I suck at it or whatever you want to call it, but I just don't really like saltwater fishing too much. Um, I like warm water. That's, that's where I love. I mean, like, obviously if, if I got some buddies that want to go striper fishing, I'll do it and I won't catch much, but I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> but you know salt salt's completely different than warm water shit it is and it like i'm obviously i'm from cincinnati so i grew up like bass fishing man like uh oh (laughs) i grew up bass fishing and stuff dude like roland martin uh jimmy houston you know these guys man those were my guys when i was a kid and like some days it's really hard to like to put on the salt front out here man these guys are wild Dude, they they get after it like like crazy. Um, I follow a lot of the, these salt guys because like these one guys uh, specifically flies and fins. Like th- yeah. those are the, those are the dudes that are like catching sharks. Oh the, yeah, the, oh, I like that. But like you see them, you see them out there fishing in the salt, and it's like a fucking, it's like a movie from the nineteen eighties. Like it's always grainy film. <laughs> yeah and all this stuff and it, it's it's no filters or anything it's just how it's shot like, yeah. it, it's very nostalgic <laughs> yeah dude I, I like that man i i haven't actually seen the videos but like the few saltwater guys i do follow hardcore or um you know guys like obviously flip and stuff like that and, um and i like watching the old flip shit you know uh walker's k and all that stuff like yeah you know, they Wahebe stuff, Spanish fly. Like, that's cool stuff, because I used to watch that with my grandpa back before I even... I was like, fly fishing's too crazy for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, these dudes are catching tarpon and stuff. Like, it's crazy. So, as a warm water guy, um, what's your kind of, like, favorite species to get after? Is it bass? It's, yeah, bass. Uh, smallmouth in particular, you know. Um that's kind of my meat and potatoes. Obviously, largemouth are always fun, but smallmouth are where it's at. I want to start getting on musky. Um, out here, we don't we don't have a lot out here. We have um, pickerel. You ever heard of those? Yeah, chain pickerel. Yeah, so they're like the baby baby of the of the pike, kind of. But they're really fun to um, to catch on the fly rod. Which is actually, I brought a couple flies down to show you, like what I use for that. The CK bait fish. You ever heard that fly? No. So yeah, this is this is like there's a Facebook group too on um with the chain pickerel. And uh it's the zoom fluke for fly anglers. Chuck Kraft made this fly back way back when. But it's uh is a badass bass fly, man. It just you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that a is that one of those CGH tails? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's one of those like suede tails, you know? Yeah. And, um, like, I love my game changers and all that good stuff. But, man, when it's, the going gets tough, it's right back to this. What about oh. uh, your, your Murdoch minnows? Yeah, I, I fished those, too. I didn't bring any down. Um, but those those are badass, man. I love Murdoch minnows. And it was – that fly was originally created as a saltwater fly. I know. <laughs> Did you ever hear the story of uh, Tim Landrier with it? Yeah, t- Tim was talking about it. He, uh, they, they, for lack of a better term, they were decommissioning that fly. Uh, it was either yeah. Umpa or the other company that was, that had, um, uh, had the fly and, uh, yeah. Tim caught wind of it and he bought all of those motherfuckers, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tim's another guy. I, um, like I, I asked dumb questions too, especially like, you know, before, um, like a year or two ago, I'm like, Hey man. Yeah, I'll just ask some dumb questions. Straight away response, always classy. Love, I love Tim, man. He's awesome. Yeah, the the whole tight lines crew up there, they're phenomenal, man. Did you have him on the podcast? No, no, I haven't had him on the podcast. Uh, just you, you can throughout the like small mouth and musky community, and uh, you bring up that name, and, and no one has anything bad to say. Yeah, he's awesome. Ever. Yep. So you got into fly tying during COVID. What yep. kind of sparked that interest? 
Um, honestly, um, uh, you know, there's the Mad River Outfitter channel. They had a bunch of cool stuff. And then um, uh, that's kind of where I, that's, that's where I got the like itch was from them. And then they started talking about Kelly and his flies, obviously, as I was learning and more about flies and streamers, because I'm like, there has to be more to it. And I started seeing these flies that Kelly has, and they are just insane. So that's, you know, I get onto his stuff, get his book, start nerding out, which I highly recommend people like YouTube's great, whatever, but I highly recommend you just get these people's books because it does help them. The royalties from the books, like just, just grab a book, you know, just it's like 30 bucks. I've, I've got, we got the book over here. I just, I actually just ordered Blaine's book and Bob Pop's book. Yeah. Those, the, um, which one from Pop of it? Uh, whichever one was on uh musky fool, which was, uh, I think like fly design. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pop Flies is another good one. Uh, but yeah, he, Bob Popovics too, man. Like that's, you know, I was going to get to him too in a little bit, but he's amazing. He, without him, we don't have the the Blaines and whatnot, you know. But, you know, also I think one of the people we have to credit for where we are as uh, even the predecessor to our Kellys and all these guys that was definitely uh like mark sadati yeah like so the sadati slammer yeah you know that that was a revolutionary fly and yeah, uh, i think right say again he's a striped bass guy right i think yeah 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 sadati has some cool stuff man i wish he was at shows but a lot of those guys don't do them no more well i mean they're they're getting old man yeah <laughs> you know like this, they don't... the selfishness of me i'm like okay they're like dude we're, we're old bro what are you talking about <laughs> yeah like they, they just they want to relax they don't want to see dudes like us <laughs> yeah yeah kissing their ass yeah i know um <laughs> that's, that's what it is. like like hey dude can i take a selfie with you? <laughs> <laughs> you you know that's one thing i i, I um like i don't know if it's bad or that i do but like sometimes i like to just live in the moment especially now like with social media it's easy just to sit there with your phone up your butt all day yeah and um it is good to take pictures at shows and stuff for guys that are tying and whatnot but like i got to meet david Whitlock um last year um and obviously he passed a little uh day before thanksgiving sadly yeah. um huge inspiration too for me i love dave's stuff um but I met him at Salbug and uh, I gave him a couple flies and his wife and um, like, he was so genuine, genuine, man. He was, he was amazing. And I was going to take a picture with him. But I was just like, you know what, man, I'm just going to enjoy this for myself. Like, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, no, dude, I, I understand. You know, I thought that for the longest time and I think we're around the same age. I think I might be a little older than you. Um, yeah. But one thing, uh, so I was in the army, which you know, but I didn't take a lot of pictures. You know, I was like, I'll remember this shit forever. Yeah. You know, I look back on it now and I, I actually like, I wrote a lot of stuff down. Yeah. You know, wrote like, uh, not really like a memoir, but I, I wrote a bunch like, of little stories down of shit that I remember when yeah. it was happening. And um, I look back on that and I'm like, if I would have never wrote that down or took those pictures uh, to kind of explain what was going on, I would have never remembered. So I, I try to, I do my best to actually take pictures now. Yeah. Because... I mean, it, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that a little bit. I should have taken a picture with Dave, but like at the time when I first met him, I didn't want to shove a camera in his face. I don't like, cause I was there all weekend and he knew that yeah. too. But they like, dude, he was like, he had a line around him the entire show. And I was just like, man, I, I feel like I'm taken from these people. Yeah. Cause I'm tying and I'm like stopping what I'm doing to go bug him while he's trying to like do his book signing. And I'm like, you know, but it was really cool. He signed my book I and mean, he was classy, man. I just, those, and he, you would never know. Like he, he doesn't act like he's, he, to me, he's on the top, you know, he's the Rushmore in my opinion. 
no i without a doubt you know um back to kelly kelly even took a lot of um a lot of input from um dave for some of those i mean like uh what was it what, what was dave's pattern uh, open yeah, the the sculpin that it was was the shank the shank sculpin was that Dave's? Uh, I don't remember. But there, Dave, Dave Whitlock had a streamer pattern too. I mean, there there were bits and pieces taken from so many patterns that, uh, you know, originally created like the, the uh, peanut envy and all this shit. But yeah, yeah, the zoo cougar and whatnot, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, I mean, Kelly, uh, I, I watched a video one time or something. I don't remember what the hell it was, but he was saying how his, his head, you know how like some guys pack them like super tight and do like yeah. all this craziness. Well, I have a Dave Whitlock bug upstairs too. And like Kelly's stuff, you'll see, but they, they have them loose so that when they fish them, they, they, you know, they drop to what they want. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. If it's too dense, yeah. it's just going to keep it upright. Right, like a pop, like a uh, popper, you know, whatever. Right. But, um, yeah, I found that pretty interesting. And, like, the overall head shape was, like, very, like, Dave Whitlock. I heard him say that in a video one time. And that's it, super important to me, like, cherishing those moments. But I, that being said, I, I met Clouser this year, and I was like, I'm taking a picture. Because, like, um, I don't mean to be morbid, but these guys just don't live forever. So I, no, one, I mean, no, no one does, dude. And it's not being morbid. It's being like very transparent and very real about it. No one yeah. fucking lives forever, dude. You know, yeah. like um, when we all get to Salbug, I'm taking pictures, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I want to be able to look back and re remember those times with my friends. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's a good point. So I'm, I'm glad I did backtrack on that. I um in my early years, I felt like I, you know, with the cell phones and stuff, I feel like we're sometimes we get absorbed in them, but take like photographing. It's cool. But like, I meant like doing like stories the whole time. And like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I think it was implied what you meant. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. no, no, I got you, dude. I just didn't want to live on my phone at those shows. Cause those guys, like, it, you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, you you'll, you did one show already, but I think those things are just so cool for fly tires because you can just nerd out with each other and <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the show I went to is it wasn't like a big show or anything. It was like a little local Texas show in Fort Worth. It yeah. was at the it was at the um, the stockyard there in Fort Worth. Yeah. Sure. What's up? You still had a blast, right? Oh, dude, it was no, not really. If I'm being perfectly honest, like, like it was, it was like 105 degrees. We were on asphalt outside. Oh fuck, that I'm sucks. Like, <laughs> I'm fucking su sweating. I'm talking sweating with an E, dude, and it's and it's pretty miserable. But I tied this really badass craft for a double. Yeah. That was pretty sick. I tied it out of a, uh, out of, actually out of fly fur and some like white barred grizzly. Looked pretty good. Looked pretty good. Big, big 10 mil red eyes on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love a big eye, man. I'm a sucker for a big eye. Dude, me too. Like we had, we were talking to someone recently and um, like, I don't know. I use 15 mil eyes. Yeah, those are like those are the biggest eyes you can get. Yeah. Yeah, I saw but, a dude um uh tying this the squid, like articulated squid, and it had one of those 15 mil eyes in it, and it just gave it life. Had he not put the eye in there, I know this sounds corny, but I just don't think the fly would have looked that good. Well, I think the eye really gives the fish. I mean, a lot of this shits for us, right? Like, what do we think looks good? Like that fucking perch fly I've made tonight. You know, yeah. It didn't. It didn't need fucking. Literally, I'm looking at my shit up here. It didn't need four different colors of 
angel flash in it, but I put four no. different colors of angel flash in it. The fish don't care. The fish no. would have been fine, you know, but it's yep. like, to me, I, I wanted that. So, but I think eyes, uh, I think eyes are a little bit more important than a lot of people. If you would have, it's funny because I saw a, a comment I made on a post, one of my buddy's posts. Yeah. Like, like maybe like 13 months ago, something like that. Yeah. Like pretty far back. And this is when I thought, you know, jungle cock was the perfect eye for a streamer. Yeah. Which I still think jungle cock has a place and it's really aesthetic. Yeah. But I don't think it's sustainable. It's too goddamn expensive. Um, and, go ahead. No, I agree. It's, it's, they're cool. I only use them on uh, my feather game changers and that's it. I mean, they look awesome. They really do. They look awesome. And I, I, I'd love to get my hands on some, but I just, to me, there's no point in it anymore, you know, mm. other than like that, the nice look. Yeah. But, but what it yeah. did is it gave the fish a, a place to attack, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was an attractor. It can look like eyes. It can look like bleeding gills. Who knows what it looks like to the fish, but it worked, you know, yeah. but, but I think eyes are so crucial because it gives the fish an actual place to target. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I was so like, meh, when it came to eyeballs, I was like, it doesn't matter. And then like, I, I, um, I was fishing a flat wing and, ohio where i'm from in this creek for smallmouth and um i was fishing all this fancy stuff and you, you've seen you've tied flat wings before right yeah not well but i have tied them i fished one like this big that um joe cordero's son gave me at the show this uh he's like the flat wing guru out here and uh his son gave me uh gave me one to try like it wasn't dolled up with the jungle cock right it was just like it had like these little crappy eyes glued to the sides and he gave me two and he's like, dude, fish these and like, you'll slay with them. And I'm like, all right. So I put them in my box, went to Ohio and fished them. And I was just like, I mowed them with it, dude. It was, they were small fish, but yeah, it was fun. like Creek smallmouth. Oh, love it. Dude, Creek and river smallies are the best smallies. Yeah, dude. But I, I wasn't, I wouldn't not getting out there for some of those Lake Michigan, you know, those literal mutant smallies oh the footballs yeah the, the literal footballs dude <laughs> yeah man and in lake ones too up maine dude those things are amazing oh i'm nerding out now i'm getting too excited dude uh, it's so you're so close to a lot of these places too you know yeah. i always you know i forget this right you know i'm living in texas it literally takes me like 12, 13 hours just to get to the other side of Texas. That's insane. Um, yeah. And then, but you, you spend that much time and you're in fucking Canada. It's yeah. Like <laughs> no, Canada's about, depending on where you're going, you can get to some places in six hours in Canada. Yeah. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. I mean, the, the place I go fish in Maine. Oh. What the hell? I lost my lighting. Uh, the, the place I fish in Maine is... Um, sorry about that. The, oh, you're good, dude. It don't matter. We can see you. The place I fish in Maine is five and a half hours away. And it's like... You've seen some pics from when I go up there. It's like... Um, unfortunately, the biggest fish I landed was on the stupid whopper plopper. But, you know, hey, Larry made it. <laughs> But it's just, it's, you're right, dude. It's people here also have a weird concept of travel. It's like, like guys like you would travel, you know, 45 just to get to a grocery store. It, it's, it's pretty wild. And you brought up Dahlberg there. Um, yeah, dude, Dahlberg, unreal. Yeah, he's another one of my, like, I, ha I have all these, like, I guess uh, some, some guys make fun of me and call me. Uh, like I fanboy to them, like they're like celebrities. In my opinion, for fishing, it is man. These guys deserve respect. In my opinion, um, I get excited talking. Like they're like they're the shit. Like they're fishy people. I like being around. Like you, fishy dude, Alan, fishy Alan Rupp, our buddy. Yeah, fishy dude. Like all these fishy. I like guys that like can just sit there and nerd nerd out. You know. Yeah. No. 
uh, I'm with you, dude. I, I like talking to people that like talking about fishing. Yep. And especially people that tie flies because that adds that next layer to it. Uh, there's some guys that like tying flies more than they like fishing, but those flies serve a very specific purpose. And if they didn't fish, they wouldn't understand what that purpose was. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself lately with the, the baby. I don't get to fish as much as I did. You know how that is. You have one. Yeah. And, um, but uh, now I'm slowly starting, like, you know, fish more. Because it's, it's time consuming with a kid. But yeah, dude, it's, you're right. Um, you have to put the time in, too, like you said. Yeah, and I, I don't think, I mean, people might make fun of us for it, but I don't, I, it's whatever. Like, people like NASCAR, people like, fucking wwe wrestling like you know like, like you're you're allowed to like whatever the fuck you like <laughs> yeah dude yeah I, I agree and and for us that's tying fake bugs and listening <laughs> listening to people talk about fishing <laughs> yeah exactly i mean i have my other hobbies too you know i played music all, like all my life yeah. but i um you know i uh I get excited when I talk to these guys because, uh, you know, like your flip palettes and like it, I talked to flip on once and he, I asked him to sign my book for me because I, uh, like I said, these guys don't live forever. And um, he did. And like, you just don't like, I don't think you can pay them enough respect because I think they, they, it's important to tell them like, Hey man, thanks for like teaching us this thing, these things. It is. It's, it, I'm trying to think of how to say this. It is, I'm, it is, I'm sure it means a lot, you know, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, I know when I was younger and people would be like, oh, thank you for your service. I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. You know, it's like, I, I don't really care. Yeah. I had a... <laughs> which, which probably sounds terrible, you know, it's like, I just, I didn't care, but yeah. you know, now, now it's like someone tells you like, oh, thank you for your service. It's like, thanks you know thanks yeah yeah my my buddy uh he's like that to this day he's a little he's like 40 or something like that he's just a grumpy boy you know he just <laughs> he fucking he's a grumpy rhode island punk rock guy that's <laughs> when people take service he's like i only did it for the health care and i'm like dude that's such a dick thing to say <laughs> i know it's because he does care you know what i mean yeah he in the military he just like wants to go against the grain and piss people off you know <laughs> he wants so to Dave, keep, you know yeah so you play how many instruments do you play i just play the drums i've been playing drums since i was like 12 Dave. so i saw your kit that's pretty fucking slick yeah i just so I, I play a few instruments. I used to play drums in a metal band. Uh, I played like jazz drums and all kinds of, I'm really big into percussion, like even drum and bugle chord percussion. Oh, wow. But I, yeah. But I used to play in a fucking metal band called Pierce Through the Eyes and uh, <laughs> <laughs> blast, blast beats and, and uh, triple it double bass for days, dude. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, dude. Uh, so, yes go to these fly fishing shows and i'm like i, I wear my long sleeves and stuff because i don't want to like freak out the old people but the the scene is changing man like it's like it's got like i told you guys like us guys that are into heavy music stuff like that tattoos uh the whole nine like but i always try to be respectful at shows and things like that and when i meet new people or talk to them on social media um, i try sometimes you know you slip <laughs> i mean you, you just you are who you are you know but um i think it's pretty cool what's happening in, the, in our industry right now you know um everybody getting involved different you know different people people of color women you know everyone's being accepted into this this uh this industry now and i think it's great man yeah like there's everyone's a winner in this arena you know what i mean it's yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Like you said, man, uh, it's, it's all inclusive. Um, it's, 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 it's so refreshing and it, it just feels good, man, you know, 
and yep. we have and like conservation is taking such a such a higher talk maybe we talk about it so much though that maybe some people think it loses its meaning but you know it's yeah. There, there's so much out there for it now. So I, I you yeah. know, I think we're really moving in the right direction. We're getting so far estranged from, you know, like uh, the tweed wearing dudes with the pipes and stuff, you know, it's like, yeah, where it was only a rich white man's sport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, and now it's, it's everybody. It's like, and what I, what I love is like, I follow this one guide. I follow a lot of guides, but I follow this one guy, Marty, and he's he's tatted the fuck out. He's a salt guy. And yeah. it's awesome, dude. Like, it, like I his, his tattoos are awesome. Like Aaron Chine. Aaron Chine's got awesome tattoos. Yeah. He's a tattoo artist, but he's a guy too. And he ties flies, you know? Yeah. It, it's just everybody's welcome, you know? Yep. And I mean, it's 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 important to have a little bit of diversity and whatnot and just let people let people you know it's not going to grow unless you let let other folks enjoy it you know exactly so you tie a lot of really badass streamers thank um, you and i'm not just saying that because you're here you know <laughs> or, or because you're my friend I, I would actually since you're my friend i'd tell you like first thing be like hey dude those those suck but <laughs> but they don't you tie really good flies dude um what is your if you had to pick like three patterns as a streamer guy um let's break this down into two things right so yeah. if you if you can let's pick two instead of three let's do two patterns for a beginner tire and then two patterns for your more advanced tire and streamers what would you pick for a beginner, I would say here, uh, do the woolly bugger only for two reasons. Well, there's multiple reasons, but a couple, like a couple. It teaches you how to place your materials and be consistent. Um, and you can tie them up to, you know, whatever size you want, but it, it'll catch you a bass, a trout, a bluegill, like depending on what size you tie, you can go, all the, you can run the gamut from a size eight to a two and you're catching everything, you know? throw a bead on it. You're catching small, you know I mean? You can do whatever you want, but I think it helps you with the wire, the hackle, you know what I mean? Like it teaches you how to place your materials. And then once you're, once you get that sucker down, I would do um, one thing I wish I would have done was do a, like a, a basic dry fly. Something easy and quick and just, uh, I mean, I don't know what, what what's, what's, what's an easy one. The Adam. A Griffith snap. There you go. Something, something like that, like an easy dry fly to bang out, um, or just get some foam and do a do one of these. I brought one down. Mister, is that a Mister Squiggly or Mister Wiggly? I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be a little bit more for a big, you know, but it doesn't matter how it looks. It's gonna fish, you know. It's yeah. essentially, it's just a, you know, foam cut to the gap of the hook with some wiggly legs. And it slays them. It slays them. So those are my beginners. And then uh, more intricate, I would do um, the swimming Jimmy. Um, you've seen that one, right? Yeah. Uh, the swimming Jimmy and then the bang tail from Kelly. The bang tail is such a diverse fly. It can be fished anywhere. It's not just a trout fly. Like you can take that shit in the salt and go fucking bang out redfish like all day. Like yeah. that is unreal fly that such an excellent design yeah i like to fish that bank tail in a yellow and then it, it kind of counterpartner because you just tie it on the you ever tie fish the flat liner uh no i haven't i've never it's tied a, one either it's the same thing tied horizontal so it like so it's like a dying bait fish kind of deal yeah i like yeah. that and yeah i mean there's a ton of them game changers but you, you scare people off when you do those I think it's good to do like for for your little bit more advanced after your couple there, then you go to the the bang tail or even do like a um Mike's double deceiver. Yeah, I think a double deceiver would probably be a really well, it depends on how invested you want to get in a bucktail. <laughs> yeah. Which is we talked yeah. about that 
pay on the phone it was like bucktails like insane right like 10 bucks 12 bucks for a thing of bucktail yeah for like a, a large northern like large northern tail right now is like fucking 11 dollars yeah but, uh, then- but if you're listening to this people right uh and you don't you love bucktail but you don't want to spend that much on bucktail there is no replacement for bucktail sadly but what you can do is source it from your local butcher and your local meat processors uh deer season opens in november if you don't hunt that's typically when it starts opening up and people people get table fare you know they they fill their tags uh no one eats the tails <laughs> All right, so uh, the people processing this game, uh, they don't keep the tails. And actually, if you go ask them, they'll give them to you for free. Uh, Then you can process your own tails for free. All it takes is some time, some borax, and some gloves. That's it. It's really not that messy, and it's really not that difficult. Save you a lot of money. And then you can start dyeing them yourself, too. (laughs) That's a that's a, a, a smelly business, man. It is. I've got, four, but I've got four tails sitting in my freezer right now to to process, and oh. that's gonna, you know, and that's gonna save me a, uh, it's gonna save me forty dollars, you know, like. It's huge, man. Especially when you move into commercial tying. Like I had to, I still support fly shops when I can, but it, to be economically feasible, you have to get um, commercial accounts with these companies, and just you have to get the deal. You have to, you have to get, sadly, you know, if you're, if you're not a commercial tire, and I mean, commercial tires know this, like if you're not a commercial tire, you can support local, you know, or, you know, if you don't have a local shop, find your favorite online shop. Yeah. I know. I mean, if you're a bath, like warm water guy, you got Schultz Outfitters. Those those are amazing. Those guys are like, you know, the small mouth gurus right now. You have um, uh, Mad River. I don't know who's out by you, but you got Kelly's shop. Kelly's shop ships in like he. I, I mean, it's not taking more than four or five days to get stuff from him. So, yeah. And then you've got like uh, you've got Ryan Evans with Queen City Guiding. You can go buy stuff from Ryan. Ryan's a small shop. He's a good dude. You've got Where's Dan he? Donovan. Uh, he's in New York. OK, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. He's in New York. Um and then you've got Dan Donovan with Muskie Fool out of Wisconsin. Oh, Muskie uh, Fool. Yeah, I get I get stuff from them still. Yeah, you, and always quick shipping, you know, support these dudes if you can. Yeah. But, um, but if you're a commercial tire, you already know that's uh, – you, you can't make money <laughs> doing that. It's, it's a very – like, yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I uh, – I love it. It's a love hate. Yeah. Dude, check out these eyes I got. There's some tape eyes. Oh, those are sick. There, yeah, it's orange and black, dude. Um are you, you gonna, gonna epoxy them or what? What's up? Are you gonna epoxy over them? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna lock tie them on and then yeah. uh epoxy over that. Yeah. Yeah, the um I don't know if you follow um Nightmare Musky or whatever. Yeah, dude. Um they sell these saddle tails now. You ever seen those? Uh uh-uh. uh. Excuse me. They're from that um that Italian guy. I forget his name. I, I'm gonna butcher it. I'm not gonna say oh, you're it. About Carini tails? Yeah, those. Yeah, Thanks. they've got they've got the they've got the uh the wave tails, the dragon tails, the yep. the thin uh the thin wave tails i actually just ordered a bunch of wave tails oh hold on am i still there yeah you're good okay yeah i actually just ordered a bunch of uh all right there we go i actually just ordered a bunch of uh uh wave tails from them yeah those are awesome man i love it it's uh it's sad but um you can't beat feathers and you can't beat bucktail. You can't, you no. know. Like natural bunny too. I don't know if fiddle with that much, but. Dude, I, I've actually been thinking, I've got so much, I've got a literal box of Zonker. Yeah, man. And I just, I just don't use it. Like I really should, but I don't. I'm thinking about like starting to tie some big ass doubles. 
some like four aught, two aught doubles for uh, like pike and bass and stuff using a bunch of this bunny. Yeah. Do you have um? Have you tied uh Lynch's double or uh, his drunken disorderly? Dude, I've tied some D and D's, but I uh, I hate. I mean, to be honest, I hate trimming deer hair. Yeah. Like, I'm not bad at it. I'm really not. I'm not bad at trimming deer hair at all. I'm not bad at packing it. I'm not bad at stacking it, spinning it, whatever. But I really hate how um, how much my heart rate and blood pressure gets up when I'm trimming. Because it's, yeah. it's literally one bad cut and you fucking ruin a fly. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it multiple times. Yeah, those, and then those go in my box. And then I'm like, I hope I have enough hooks to finish this fucking order now. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I started tying, and I was doing these swimming jimmies I showed you earlier, these guys. Yeah. And, oh, my God, man, doing the head work, like, in those, and, like, your, your drunks and some of Kelly's stuff, the sex dungeon. I'm like, oh. If you trim it too tight, it looks like a little bullet. And you're like, oh, boy, what am I doing? And it's easy to do, especially on D&Ds, man. Yeah. Because like, yeah, you got... you've got the, the conical top of the wedge. And then you've got the lower end straight in yeah. of the wedge. He uses so a little, uh, like a blade holder. Uh, like a like a one of these yeah yep oh that was the other sponsor damn it i'll get them on the end that's that's from one of our sponsors that's from an Adramus fly company oh and Adramus, yeah he um uh, uh, herb's the man did you talk to him yeah dude Her herb's uh, herb <laughs> Herm's awesome. Like, uh, this is one of their buck. This is one of their buck shears. Actually, I don't ever use it, but that, I got that from them many moon ago when I was still using Doctor Slick scissors, and I thought everything was tied out of EP fiber. So, yeah, I've yeah. I've got enough EP fiber to last me my entire lifetime. Oh my god, yeah, I got into that too, man. Oh, and uh, Herb's just an amazing, dude. I love him too, dude. Her Herb's going to be coming on here, but you know, dude, dude's awesome. I mean, he, he ties flies. He's like a, he's like a, this steelhead junkie. He's a train engineer, you know, like he's, yeah. he's a good dude. He's a good storyteller too. I haven't heard any of his stories, but I'm keen to. Like yeah, I said, yeah. I've been telling you some train stories and fishing the hacks and shit like that, man. He, he's cool. He's good people. Well, I think we're coming up on our hour, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here yeah. drinking iced coffee. I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you're fine, man. Like, this has been fun. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I did it. I'm stoked. I know we've been talking about it for a little bit, and I'm excited. I got to talk about a couple flies and uh, pay respects to, you know, guys like Dave and whatnot. And yeah. I mean, I did 100%. And um, is there anything that you want to talk about before we get off here? Um, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions, but is there anything that you want to talk about? Oh, to like if you if you're going to tie or you're just a you know a regular fly fisherman or a regular ang angler in general, just give it a try. You know, get a little five weight cheapy and go go hit the bluegill pond. You know. Yeah, you're not, uh, as as Kelly said, you're not going to turn into a pillar of salt if you do the other. No, exactly, yeah, and, and I still gear fish too, you know. Yeah, dude, I haven't gear fished in a super long time, but I'm going to I'm gonna start picking it up a little bit more here and there, I think. Yeah, no, I just, every now and again, I just go out there and I'm like, you know what, Ned Rig and a freaking Whopper Popper, and I bring two rods and that's it. This, uh, some stuff that you and I have in common, uh, even beyond, you know, like music taste and both wearing flannel shirts, uh, is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, you also make soft plastics or you steer. And I, I mean, I did the same shit. 
yeah yeah i did i still have all the stuff and i'm like it's like i don't know if i'm gonna do it again but it's it's uh that's another love hate more like hate for me now but i think it's cool to learn it learn that craft too you know i think it's awesome to learn it like you i hate it like i it got to the point you know i was i was i was selling them you know i was actually making sales you know here and there uh made a decent amount of money off of it that's kind of what helped me get started in you know fly tying i was able to fund some of my some of my fun shit but yeah it's it's hot it's literally hot work um yeah and there's a million other dudes doing it yeah it's a super saturated industry it is the market's incredibly saturated and a lot of it is uh he said she said there there's a lot more word of mouth stuff going on yeah i would say like negative connotations in that market there's a i mean just to be quite frank there's a lot of fucking douchebags uh especially in like the home the home brewing uh <laughs> plastics dudes there's a yeah. lot of fucking douchebags i've seen it i agree yeah yeah between the two industries i'd say you get a little more yeah you already know what i'm gonna say but you, yeah you, whew, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but adam where can everybody find you and get a hold of you to buy some of your sick ass flies yeah man so uh if if you want to check me out just go instagram adam dot my name hortonberry or uh anchorflytackle.com um i still have it with the you know both gear and and uh flies but it's it's fly focused now um but yeah if you check out those um that's the easiest way to hit me up. Awesome. Well, everybody, um, go follow Adam. You just hit 2000. Yeah. 2000. He just hit 2000 on Instagram. Let's get him some more followers. Let's, uh, let's crank this shit up. And if you like fishing for smallmouth on the fly and you like quality bugs, uh, hit up Adam, it, you know, support small business. Dude ties good shit. All right. I can't guarantee you'll catch catch fish on them. Uh, that's up to you. But I can guarantee that they're going to be quality flies. But <laughs> this episode of Working Class Fishing was brought to you by Anadromous Fly Company. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Didn't mean, to, didn't mean to forget you on the first one. We've had a lot of uh, changing of hands here. And then you've got CD Fishing, Angry Rooster, 317 Flies, Sure Cure, Naughty Tackle, and Lid Rig. All right. If you want to get a hold of us, uh, that being Working Class Fishing, you can email us at workingclassfish at gmail.com or go to workingclassfishing.com. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all these places. Um, just look at Working Class Fishing and you'll find us. If you got any questions, shoot us, uh, shoot us a message. You want to come on the podcast? Shoot us a message. Come on. We don't care. Uh, you got a story to tell. Uh, we're willing to hear it. And just everybody, thanks so much for listening. Adam, thanks again for coming on, dude. Thanks and for having me. Until next time, everyone, eat your vegetables and we'll be seeing you. <laughs>